Today we're actually going to be cooking in the truck, actually in the truck. So, but we're going to be making a Southwest mac and cheese with chicken, onions, peppers, cheese, noodles, you know, all that good stuff. So that's what we're going to get started on today. I'll explain all the ingredients and stuff here in a little bit. Um, so anyway, again, thanks for joining me while I'm here. If you like what I do, hit that like button. If you want to see me do something, you know, in particular, you know, leave me a comment. Subscribe to the channel so that way you can hit the notification bell so that way you can get all the notifications when I post a video if you like them. So, anyway, I'm going to start processing some stuff. I'm going to cut up some peppers, some onions, uh, some chicken, all that stuff, and get ready to get started. So, we'll see you in a bit. All right, welcome back, everyone. So, today we're going to do, like I said, a Southwest mac and cheese for my take on it. So, we're going to have a little bit of onion I've already chopped up chicken that I've already chopped up, uh, bell pepper I've already chopped up, and then I'm going to put in some Rotel tomatoes with green chilies and some corn. I'm going to season it with some uh, salt, pepper, garlic, um, cumin, paprika, oregano, yeah. And then I've also, for the pasta, I'm doing a rigatoni instead of elbow macaroni because i like a bigger bite of your you know i don't know bigger piece i guess uh plus the sauce gets inside of it better in my opinion so the sauce i'm gonna do like a, a bechamel and then i'm gonna add uh, some cheese to it that's where i'll put my rotel in um, so i'm gonna do cheese and i've got just shredded kobe jack here um, and of course butter flour and then a little salt and pepper for the bechamel. So that's the uh, plan for today, and that's what I'm gonna get started on. So let me get everything organized. I'm gonna go ahead and get the noodles on to cook, and then we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back everyone. Right now I've got about three tablespoons of butter melting right here. I don't know if you can see how well you can see it, but I've got it melting right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the bechamel. So I got three tablespoons of butter. Once it gets melted, then I'm gonna put in about three tablespoons of flour as well. So you want equal parts of oil or butter and flour. That way you can make a roux. And then once I get that, then I'll add in the milk and uh, start basically a, a bechamel. You know, most bechamels start out with just a, you know, milk, butter, or a cream, or half and half, and butter or oil, uh, preferably butter, gives you a better flavor. So all right, the butter is melted. So now I'm gonna grab my flour, which I keep in a Ziploc baggie. And I'm not really gonna measure it, I'm just gonna kinda sprinkle it in there until I figure I got about how much I need. That's pretty close. So I'll mix that around, see how it looks. Mm. It's pretty close, just a smidge more here. There we go. All right, so now I'm not gonna cook this very long. So let me put my flour back in my Ziploc bag so that way it's not getting everywhere. Do that before my bechamel burns. All right, so you mix it around. Like I said, you're not gonna cook it very long. You just wanna get that flour taste out of it. And as soon as you smell like a little nutty smell to it, then you know that your bechamel or your flour has been cooked out, or the flour taste has been cooked out. So, we're getting close to it. I do this on a, on a medium to medium low heat, so it doesn't go too fast. There it is. Now I'm gonna pour my milk in. I always wanna put a little bit at a time. Okay. Put a little at a time. Mix it around, cause you don't wanna get lumps in it. So you mix it up real good. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna start thickening. 
once it comes up to temperature and starts coming up to a boil, then that flour and everything is going to absorb that water or that milk and it's going to thicken up. Then I'll add some more milk, you know, and get it to the thickness that I want it. And that's when I can start adding everything else I want to add into it. So right now you see I got it mixed in real good. There's no lumps in it right now. It's exactly what you want. So we're gonna let this keep coming up temperature. It's already starting to steam, so it ain't gonna take long. Make sure you scrape any, any that you had on the side or whatever. Make sure you scrape that off and get that incorporated. See, it's already starting to kind of thicken up just a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. You know, it don't come up to its complete thickening power until it starts to boil or simmer. That's when you know you got it at its full thickening. Now keep in mind when you're making a roux, the longer you cook a roux, so you have your blonde roux, See how it's starting to thicken up real good now? But you have a blonde roux, which is basically what this is for your bechamels. Then you have a darker, which is kind of a peanut color. That will go in for like, um, oh, etouffees, stuff like that. All right, so that's pretty thick now. So now I want to add a little bit more milk. Okay. Mix that around real good. That way it's not lumpy. But I don't want it to get it too thin, but I don't want it too thick either. Because I'm, like I said, I'm gonna add my cheese and everything. This is what's gonna go into my macaroni and cheese whenever I get ready for that. But back to the bechamel or to the bruise, you have, like I said, a blonde. Then you have a, uh, like a peanut color which is, uh, like I said, for your etouffees and stuff like that. And then you have a dark roux, which is more like your gumbo and different soups and stuff like that. So, but keep in mind though, that uh, the darker the roux, the less uh, thickening power it has. I was trying to find my whisk, but I don't know what I did with it. So as this keeps coming up to temperature, you'll see it's starting to thicken up again already. It's best to do this with a whisk, but like I said, I don't know where it's at right now. So we just keep stirring it here. Like I said, it's gonna come up to, to temperature again, and then it'll start thickening back up, which is already starting to thicken up again. So we'll just let it keep going here. This is basically the start of like an Alfredo as well. You started with this, then you can add in your Parmesan, your Asiago, uh, mozzarella, provolone, gouda, whatever kind of cheese you want to put in it. And you can do that. And that's how you started an, an Alfredo. So I don't put salt in it until after I get my cheese and everything in there because of the fact that cheese has got salt in it. So I don't want to get anything too salty. All right, so now we're getting back to the temperature and back to the thickness that I want because I'm gonna be putting cheese in it too, so it's gonna get thick again. So now I'm gonna take my cheese and open it up here. Stir this, see how it's getting thicker? The warmer it gets, then the thicker it's gonna get. So now it's thick. So I want to go ahead and start putting my cheese in here now. 
So I'm gonna put half of a eight ounce bag, which is about a cup. I'm gonna start with that and I'm gonna mix that in. Okay. Let that get all mixed in and incorporated. Pull it off the heat every now and then so that way it doesn't burn. But like I said, it's gonna start getting thicker and thicker. And this is gonna be for my uh, macaroni and cheese. See how thick it is right now? So if I want to thin it up, I can just put a little milk in it. Not too much. I don't want it too thin. So then you just mix it all up. And just incorporate the milk in it. Set it back over here so it doesn't get too cold. So you just keep doing it until you get a nice little cheese sauce going. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to put a little bit more milk. I'm going to thin it up just a little bit. Like I said, when I put Rotel in it, it's gonna get thick here. It's gonna thin it up some more too. So you see now it's got a pretty good, pretty good consistency now, as you can see. So at this point here, I want to open up my Rotel. Find my candle, oh, yep, it's over here. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the heat because I don't want it to burn. Open up my rotel and then dump in my rotel. Set that over out the way for the trash and then put it back over here and mix the rotel in. You see how it thinned up again because of the juice in the rotel? But it quickly comes right back to, to thickness as it heats back up. That's done. Basically, now you have like a queso. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the rest of my cheese here. And I'm gonna put the rest of my cheese in. Now we have a total of two cups of shredded cheese. And then you stir it up. Mix it all in. Get it all incorporated. Sorry if it runs long, you know, video runs long. But this is all I'm doing right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish incorporating this. And then whenever it's ready and I start the next process, I'll bring you back. So we'll talk to you in a minute. All right, welcome back everyone. Now you see that my cheese sauce is, is nice and, and thick and cheesy. It's got the rotel in it and everything. So it's doing really good. So we're gonna let that sit there for a little bit. Let all the flavors kind of meld together and, and come together. Meanwhile, now I am going to start the chicken. So first thing first, I've got my chicken. I got my skillet here on getting hot, so it should be pretty warm right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my chicken. Yeah, you can hear it sizzling right now. Knock the dust off my spoon because I've had it stored. All right, so I'm gonna mix that around. Let's just start cooking. Okay, spread it around. Now at this point here, it's just starting to cook. 
So I want to get into my seasoning stash here. My little box of seasonings that I keep around. And I've got some garlic powder, which I'll put on here in a little bit. I've got some cumin. Some oregano. And chili powder, which I'm not going to use. Here's some black pepper. Set that over there. And some paprika. So, I'm going to put some paprika in here. Sprinkle some paprika on there. Okay. And I'm going to put some, uh, where did I put my cumin? Here? Here's my cumin. I'm going to put some cumin on there. Put some hope this time what I do with my oregano there it is or oregano put some oregano in there all right and then grab my stir here and I stir it again if you could smell this right now it's got that almost like a taco smell you know it's got those, those southwest you know Smells. So I don't want to put my uh, garlic in right now because I don't want it to burn. Because if you burn garlic, cook it too long, then it gets um, it gets bitter, and I don't want that. So at the same time, you got the cumin and the paprika, and those are kind of bitter if they don't get cooked enough. So you put those in first and let them cook. So I'm gonna stir my my cheese sauce here for a minute while that's cooking up some more. Stir this around again. You know this. This ain't uh, you know, you know, fake cooking stuff. But this is actual cooking. You know, we don't just take everything that's already cooked and put it together. No, we actually, I'm actually cooking, cooking this stuff. As you can see. You know, I've heard somebody say, well, you know, if you just buy the stuff already pre-made and put it together, it tastes just the same. No, it don't. There's no way pre-made stuff is going to taste better than stuff that you are, that you make yourself. Because you're going to put the flavors, the seasonings that you want, how much you want of it, so that way you get the flavors that you want. And not, you know, what, um, you know, Betty Crocker or, um, you know, whatever store seasoned it, seasoned it. You get to season it the way you want it. If you want more salt, you put more salt. If you want less salt, you put less salt. You know, more pepper, more pepper. Oops, I gotta be careful not to throw it out of skillet. So now, you know, it's cooking up pretty good. The chicken's cooking up pretty good. You see it start to cook. It's not done, nowhere near done. So, we're gonna let it cook a little bit longer. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting my other ingredients in it, like onion. Good old onion. I'm going to throw that onion in there. Lots of onion. You know, onion makes for a good flavor. As it cooks, onion kind of sweetens up. You know, it caramelizes or something like it. It sweetens up a little bit. Oh, there they are. And then I'm going to put my, my bell peppers in there. I'm using red bell pepper, but you can use green or orange or yellow or purple or polka dotted or whatever color you want to do you know if you got those kind of peppers and that's the kind of peppers you want in then put them in there if you want to put poblanos put poblanos in it if you want to put ancho chilies in it then put ancho chilies in it i mean it's your cooking it it's your flavor it's what you want you know don't let somebody else tell you how to do it do it yourself do it the way you want it you know your taste buds are going to be different than mine and you know anybody else's it's always going to be how you like things so you need to put what you want in it and cook it the way you want it you know you're feeding your family so 
cook for your family. Just because, you know, uh, I don't know, south of the border or whatever other, you know, Hispanic restaurant or, or you know, or Applebee's or, or Denny's or whatever. You know, whatever they put in it don't mean that you got to. You put what you want to in it. That way it tastes the way you want it. So if you could smell this right now with the onions and the peppers and the cumin and the paprika and the oregano, man, this is smelling. You know, I'd almost get me a tortilla, put a little sprinkle, a little cheese on it, and just eat it just like that. It's almost like a fajita, almost. Not quite. You know, you can put jalapenos in here if you wanted to. I almost did, but then I found that, you know, I remembered I had some rotel. So that's what I did. All right, so now with the onions and the bell pepper in it, now I can actually go ahead and add my garlic. Reason being is because the onions and the bell pepper are gonna keep it from getting too hot and cooking too long. Therefore, it's not gonna bitter it up a little bit. So I'm gonna put some garlic in there. I'm just using garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic if you want. Chopped up, minced up, you know, pressed in, whatever you wanna do it. Do it your way. And then you cook that right there just like that for a little bit. Mix it all up. You know, I got my noodles over there. I'm gonna depressurize them real quick, see what happens here. See if they're done. They smell like they're getting done. That sounds amazing. Almost scary. Now I'm gonna put some pepper in it. I prefer the fresh cracked pepper over, you know, ground pepper that you buy. Just because, you know, it's got a, I don't know, fresher taste, I guess. A little bit stronger taste. Again, if you notice, I have not put any salt in here at all. Keep in mind, that cheese has got salt. The Rotel has got salt, you know, so. Once you get this here cooked where you need it to be, you know, I am going to add a little bit of water to this here in just a second. Not very much, just a little bit, because I want it to to be able to get all those seasonings down inside that chicken and and whatnot. So, I mean, it's looking pretty good right now, but we're gonna keep it going here. And I may not even need to add water. We'll just let it keep cooking just like this. Okay? Just like that. Just let it cook. Stir my cheese sauce. Cause I don't want it to burn, don't want it to get stuck in the bottom. You know? That milk and that bechamel helps keeps it from, you know how cheese is you know, solid. Well, that bechamel helps keep it into a sauce form. And you see how, how nice and creamy it looks right now. It's not all chunky other than the tomatoes. The tomatoes are gonna make it a little chunky. But other than that, you know, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna give it a quick little taste here. Yep, that's tasting pretty good right there. Pretty good. You know, you can even add some red pepper flake to this if you wanted to. Um, I personally didn't want to add it right now because I didn't know how spicy the Rotel is. But tonight I'm not really looking for spicy food. Although I do like spicy food. Uh, so tonight I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my my noodles here. Ooh, they are hot. Hot, hot, hot. Then I'm gonna stir them and see how well they cooked up. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. here a minute make sure they all get you know don't have any that are dry because when you use a instant pot you don't have to use as much water so 
stir this around some more. This video here is running a little long. So I'm gonna finish cooking this chicken and everything. And whenever it gets done, then I'll come back and bring you back. Um, as soon as I figure out what I do with my little remote control. But anyway, so I'm gonna finish stirring this up, finish cooking the onions and the bell peppers and the chicken and everything. And then I will bring you back here in a few minutes when I start putting it all together. So we'll see you in a bit. Welcome back everyone. While you was away, I put a little corn in with the uh, chicken and, and peppers and onions. And now I started mixing in my noodles. So I want to continue to mix in my noodles drain them as I put them in and then I'll put the cheese sauce in here in just a minute I'm almost out of propane actually I'm out of am out of propane on this bottle so I want to do this before it gets too cold so just keep adding them in there so once I uh, add all these in and I get ready to add the cheese sauce, I'll bring it back. See you in a few minutes. Woo, I was shaking y'all all about there time, that time. All right, so I got my noodles added in. I'm gonna stir them around a little bit, get them all covered in my, my Southwest chicken mix here. Truck went by, the sun reflected off the windshield and flashed me. So now I'm going to check on my my cheese mix here, cheese sauce. And I'm gonna pour my cheese sauce in. Don't wanna add it all just yet. I wanna put in about half and then I'm gonna mix it again. There's getting mixed up. So now I'm gonna add some more cheese sauce to it. Add the rest of it in. Here's what I get. And then Go back to stirring it all in, get it all mixed up real good, get it all incorporated, get all the flavors mixed up, try not to make a mess, but this is me we're talking about. I make messes and I tend to mess things up. I don't go by any particular recipe, I just throw it together. You know, I don't use specific measurements. Uh, I just kind of guesstimate what I think feels right. And that's what I go with. So this time may not be taste exactly the same as last time and vice versa. So there we go. Now it's all mixed up real good. Looking all incorporated. So this is basically Southwest chicken mac and cheese so it's got chicken it's got onions bell peppers corn tomato um, cheese lots of cheese you know so this is basically what we got this is gonna be dinner so I'm gonna plate some up put it in a bowl here in a minute and then I'll check back with you in just a few all right welcome back so this is it that's all bowled up you know put it in a bowl getting ready to serve it here in a minute so now I'm gonna adjust the camera here so maybe you can actually see me but then again who knows so anyway thanks for joining me today don't forget to like and subscribe if you like it subscribe if you want it's up to you I'm just out here doing what I can to kill some time and have a little fun and eat better than the crap out of the truck stops so truck stops need to, uh, if y'all are checking this out, get more healthier options in this inside, you know. Start selling some produce, start selling some fresh meat so we can cook ourselves instead of always having to rely on your, 
you know, processed crap, you know, with soybean and whatever else is in that stuff. We don't even know what it is half the time. So, it's a mystery meat. But anyway, uh, like I said, thanks for joining me. And until the next time, be safe.